Chapter 1.4.5 Bitcoin's coins have only ever been a metaphor. The names we give to our computing systems are metaphors. These names are not meant to be taken literally. At the risk of insulting the intelligence of the reader, the computer system which stores our emails and cat pictures is not literally a cloud. Similarly, the computer system used to sell personal and preferential information of billions of people to advertisers is not literally a Facebook. Moreover, any object described using any type of object-oriented software design specification is not an actual object. These descriptions are abstractions used to make it easier to understand the desired functionality and behavior of our software. In 2008, a pseudonymous software engineer named Satoshi Nakamoto decided to describe a variation of the first reusable proof-of-work system developed by Hal Finney as a coin, rather than to continue to call it a proof. Instead of calling it a reusable proof-of-work protocol that utilized a decentralized server architecture rather than a trusted server architecture, this pseudonymous engineer named it Bitcoin and asserted that it could be used as a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. This pseudonymous engineer was famously short with their description of this technology. Nobody seems to know who the engineer was or where they worked, although they clearly had subject matter expertise in NSA cryptography. The specification they wrote was informally published, and it's only eight pages long. This pseudonymous engineer did not elaborate much about the design in follow-on conversations and they famously disappeared just two years after first announcing the project. Nothing was formally published or peer-reviewed. The following point should be made explicitly clear. What academia and industry discuss about Bitcoin, including and especially what has been formally published about this technology, is what other people who didn't design it have to say about it based off one, one of many potential use cases for proof-of-work technologies, and two, a metaphorical design specification produced by a pseudonymous entity that orphaned the project. Everything that has been written about Bitcoin through formal channels was written by people speculating about someone else's metaphorical design concepts, developing their own theories about it, connecting their own dots based on the same minimal public information. Consequently, there's no expert or authority on general purpose use cases of proof of work technologies like Bitcoin. There are only people with expertise on singular use cases of proof of work technologies like Bitcoin. An overwhelming majority of the professional and academic analysis surrounding Bitcoin has been centered around the presumption that the only use case for this technology is to serve as a peer-to-peer -peer cash system, electronic cash system, for apparently no other reason than the fact that peer-to-peer -peer payments were the first operationally successful use case for this technology made by the pseudonymous engineer who developed it. The public appears to be ignoring the principles of computer theory and interpreting Bitcoin's name and design specifications literally, not metaphorically, despite the fact that coin was not even the first name or theorized use case of proof-of-work bread pudding technology. People are not only adopting the habit of assuming the only possible use case for this technology is financial, they are also adopting the habit of acting like Bitcoin's coins are only coins even though it's incontrovertibly true that all object-oriented software design specifications are abstract. In other words, it's incontrovertibly true that Bitcoin's coins don't exist. Coins are completely imaginary, are a completely imaginary concept. Like anything abstract, Bitcoin's coins could just as easily be abstracted as anything else the imagination is capable of conceiving. Hence, why proof-of-work technologies were called something else for more than a decade.
before Nakamoto published the Bitcoin design specification. Yet people keep acting like Bitcoin is strictly a monetary protocol. Moreover, people with economic or financial expertise keep acting like experts in proof-of-work technologies like Bitcoin for practically no other reason than the fact that this technology was arbitrarily called a coin and has miscellaneous operational use cases in finance. Internal combustion engines are useful for cutting down trees with chainsaws. But that doesn't make a lumberjack an expert in internal combustion engine design. So why are financiers claiming to be experts in proof-of-work technologies like Bitcoin? Yeah, what do they know about cybersecurity? What do they know about encryption? Public and private keys? Zero. The most they can claim to be experts in is how to use proof-of-work technologies like Bitcoin for miscellaneous financial use cases. And let me tell you, they don't even know the right way to use it. Theoretically speaking, anything to include an arbitrarily named software abstraction can be monetized. Monetary value itself is an abstract concept. So of course, something abstract can have monetary value. Moreover, bits of information transferred and stored via computers can represent any kind of information. So of course it can represent monetary information. Do you understand the profoundness of that statement? The same way you can secure every dollar you value or everything you value is the same way that we can stop spam in email by adding a real world physical cost to a action in cyberspace it's the same way that any superpower could secure how their nuclear warheads get launched is how you can purchase beverage at your local deli it is not the fact that people have assigned monetary value to proof-of-work protocols like Bitcoin that the author finds noteworthy. It's the fact that people aren't acknowledging how the term coin is just as much of an arbitrary name for proof-of-work protocols and their underlying bits of information as the name stamp or bread pudding. For some reason, much of current academic research doesn't acknowledge this basic principle of computer science. This basic principle of computer science, this would explain why researchers keep recycling the same theoretical frameworks when analyzing Bitcoin. This would also explain how academic consensus about the primary value delivered function of proof of work protocols changed following the operational success of Bitcoin. <sighs> But why has academic consensus about proof of work changed if the underlying theories in computer science have not? This cannot possibly be, in my opinion, a throwaway line. This is a shot at how we achieve academic consensus. Look who this is coming from. Go back and read this author's credentials. <laughs>